which phone has a better camera between the Galaxy A51 and the A70? Let's find out. A51 brings a whole new camera setup and design. The quad camera system has a depth sensor of 5 megapixels at the top with f2.2. Next to that is a 48 megapixels main camera with f2.0. There is a dedicated macro shooter with f2.4. A51 has a single 32 megapixel sensor on the front with f2.2. On the other hand is Samsung's last year rockstar, the Galaxy A70 with a triple camera system. It's got 5 megapixels f2.2 depth sensor, a 32 megapixels f1.7 main sensor, and an 8 megapixels f2.2 ultra wide camera sensor. A70's front camera is also a 32 megapixel sensor but with f2.0 aperture. For those of you who are interested, the A51 is using the Sony IMX582 sensor at the back and a Sony IMX616 sensor on the front. On the other hand, the A70 is using Samsung's own GD1 sensor at the back and also on the front. Let's get into the cameras of these handsets now. The photo mode welcomes you on both the phones. First of all, the ultra wide mode can be activated easily. I'm using a full aspect ratio at the moment. You can change the aspect ratio to 3 to 4 H to activate the 48 megapixels on the A51 and 32 megapixels on the A70. Other than that, you have the timer, the filters, the scene optimizer is turned on and all of the stuff is on your screen. Both phones lose the ability to use HDR in the high resolution. The 48 megapixels and 32 megapixels are pretty much uh, restricted on these phones. After that is the live focus mode. Uh, this mode works for both the front and the rear cameras. The live focus on both phones does not work with the 48 megapixels and 32 megapixels mode. Since these phones are using the quad bay arrangement, the resolution trims down to one fourth of the marketed resolution in the live focus mode. When we switch to the video mode, we get the 4K video recording option on both the phones. However, the A70 also offers 1080p at 60 frames per second, which is missing on the Galaxy A51. These phones do not have any optical image stabilization. Uh, there is electronic image stabilization only. A51 can shoot 4K videos in the ultra wide mode too, which is what the A70 cannot. A70's ultra wide videos are also limited to 1080p. For the front cameras, the A51 supports 4K and the A70 is once again limited to 1080p resolution only. The rest of the settings are on your screen. You can also change the aspect ratio for the videos. And yes, both phones support 1080p super steady videos too. In the pro mode, both handsets have same options which include the ISO, the exposure and the white balance. If you want to take selfies in the full 32 megapixels on both phones, you will have to set the resolution for the front camera to 3 to 4 H or 4 to 3 H. A51 can take live focus selfies in the group mode too and this is something the A70 cannot. Other options are pretty much the same. The A51's night mode works for the front camera while the A70 is present. Now, I have taken a lot of pictures and videos on both the phones and this is going to be the most in-depth comparison ever. So keep your calm and let's go ahead. I took my own pictures in the ultra wide, the normal, the 48 megapixels versus 32 megapixels and the live focus mode first of all. At first, I thought if my Galaxy A70's camera wasn't working properly, but there was nothing wrong with it because this phone uses Samsung's GD1 sensor and Samsung sensors often lack colors. The A51 had a clear edge here with the colors and the dynamic range. The pictures looked cool. Even when I tried zooming in, I found the details going superior on the Galaxy A51 side. There was only one picture where the A70 had superior details. Also, the A70 had slightly better edge detection, but if I talk about the overall look and feel of the pictures, I completely fell in love with the A51's pictures. I do remember a lot of users commenting on my Galaxy A70's camera review about their camera's quality being poor. I have now realized that the A70 did not have a superb camera. Heads off to Samsung for pulling out such a great module on the A51. I believe that the things will improve from here on. 
Let's take a look at the 48 megapixels versus the 32 megapixels pictures now. Here the Galaxy A51 once again took over the A70. I think A51's result is a no brainer. It speaks for itself. Yes, the A70 produced slightly better colors for this picture in particular, but the A51 was ahead with the details. There is some yellowish tint on all the A70 pictures, but the A51 is keeping all the pictures in a cool tone. Even this flamingo looks very detailed on the A51 side. The A70's picture looks as if the camera lens is dirty, but I did check it twice and it was super clean. Uh, I should just apologize the A70 owners because I cannot really help it. The crisp clear pictures on the A51 side have impressed me greatly. To make sure that nothing was going wrong, I took too many pictures and I have added them all in this comparison. Uh, now this particular picture is my favorite one and I am liking it on both the sides. For such a picture, I think it totally depends on the choice of the users. The details are definitely on the upper side from the A51's lens. But A70 tried to do a good job with the colors and the dynamic range. In this one, the A70 is ahead. Both phones have a horrible edge detection, but the A51 has darker shadows. It fails to keep up all the objects visible. In the lieu of uh, blurring out the background, it wipes off half of the objects. On the other hand, the A70 still has the objects blurred in the background. The dynamic range of the A70 is much better here. This is yet another picture where both phones have a good photo, but again it's all about the details, the sharpness and that color boost. A51 has the very minute details clear and many users are going to love that. Yes, A51's picture is bigger, but because it's using a Sony sensor, it definitely has that edge throughout. I don't remember what went wrong with this one, but let's give the winner's title to the A70 for this one. A70 has taken a very neat picture. Here is an indoor picture full of colors. The A70 has a greenish effect on the yellow color. A51 shows all the colors as they looked in real. Dynamic range of the A51 is also on the upper side once again. I think you can check out and find out the phone you want by looking at this particular picture for a while. I have tried to bring in all the possible colors in this one. This is another good picture on both sides, but again the A51 has superior sharpness, well saturated picture and with great details. A51 has a dedicated macro camera and here is how it works. I guess I don't need to explain what's going on here. A70 doesn't have macro capabilities so I just tried to take a close up anyway. After this I took some more ultra wide and the normal pictures. The A51's color boost was visible throughout. A70's pictures looked blurred at times. There were the moments when the A70's pictures were on par with the dynamic range. I am sure this phone still has a good camera but it's not properly optimized. Samsung has greatly improved its mid-range lineup with the successors of the Galaxy A lineup and it can be seen in the A51's pictures. These quad bear camera sensors are supposed to produce great low light pictures. When I tried shooting in the low light, both phones did a great job. A51 was once again ahead with clear and crispier pictures. Also the dynamic range was accurate in the low light. A70 couldn't keep uh, the pictures lit enough. Switching to the front camera showed that the A51 can shoot night mode selfies too, but the A70 cannot. However, the A70 managed to take a good picture without the night mode too. Lastly, there are the selfies. This section got me really confused. Both phones did an equally good job. A51's skin tone was on the natural side while the A70's picture looked a bit more beautified. My face looked brighter on all the pictures taken on the Galaxy A70. The skin color was clearly natural on the A51. However, the A70 had slightly better edge detection once again as compared to the Galaxy A51. 
I must remind you guys once again that both phones are using a 32 megapixel camera sensor on the front. A51 has a Sony IMX616 sensor and A70 has a GD1 sensor. Now these sensors have a huge difference and it can be clearly seen in all the pictures taken from the front camera. The color boost is all over the Galaxy A51's pictures from the front camera too. The live focus pictures come out great on both the phones. Well guys, this is a front camera video from the Samsung Galaxy A51 and the Galaxy A70. These phones have only one mode in common which is a 1920 into 1080p mode. This video is going to uh, show you the mic quality of these phones and also the resolution. Uh, you can tell me how are you finding the footage taken on these phones. Right now the sun is uh, right in my face. I will just move around. Uh, one thing that I would like to tell you is that the Galaxy A51 can shoot 4K video from the front camera. But the Galaxy A70 is limited to 1920 into 1080p, which is why I am going to show you uh, the 1920 into 1080p comparison only. If you want to look at the 4K front samples of the Galaxy A51, find the video's uh, link in the description below. Now the videos are coming your way. I have captured these videos in all the common modes on both the phones. If you are interested in checking out the video modes of these phones, you can find those links in the description. Here you will find the rear 4K, the 1080p and the super steady videos along with the videos from the front cameras. With this said, I will conclude this video as well. Uh, the Galaxy A51 is definitely a no-brainer. Samsung has done a remarkable job and the A51's camera is a lot better than the Galaxy A70. So for all of those who are looking for a new phone and are currently confused between the Galaxy A70 and the Galaxy A51, you should definitely go with the Galaxy A51 without any second thoughts. Technology always outdates and we can clearly see what's going on with the Galaxy A70. I don't believe that its camera is going to get any better. So it's the best uh, choice to spend your money on something that is very new and that is optimized very well. I will now sign off as you continue watching this video. Make sure to drop your feedback in the comment section down below. I would love to hear you guys out. If you have not subscribed to my channel yet, please do so now. And make sure to hit the thumbs up if you like this video at some point. I will see you guys in another one really soon.